Ah, hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, so, this is actually not a Star Adventurer versus the Skywatcher AZ GTI video. Well, it kind of is, but um, yes, it's, it's, not, it's not a rivalry anyway. Um, so, if you watched my last video, you probably saw that I did a little video on the Star Adventurer, which is a basic equatorial tracking mount. It's the kind of thing that people go with um, when they're trying to go from a DSLR and take longer exposures of the night sky. So um, it's, it's a af very affordable option for that next step up from just a wide angle DSLR lens. So um, yeah, a lot of people um, go for this as that second step maybe in the astrophotography journey. Now for me, I already had a HEQ5, so I basically already had a reasonably good quality equatorial mount, which is in my back garden, and it permanently has a, um, well, it doesn't permanently, it's not a permanent rig, but um, you know, I have a telescope that I sit on that, and whenever I get clear nights, I operate it from the back garden. And that's like um, what you would consider just a full, um, a fully sort of automated astrophotography setup. So you hook it up to your computer, it goes to where it needs to in the sky, it's got an auto focuser on it and it's all very easy to find what it is you're looking for in the sky. Um, so I was then looking for a more portable option as well. So something that I could use um, on things like car camping trips or something I could take down to the beach that's close to me. Possibly at a push, something I could take on a short hike, um, not a long hike. I do multi-day hikes and stuff like that where I'd probably never consider taking any of this gear because, you know, a wide angle lens and a DSLR is as much weight as I would want to carry for those things. But for those other things like car camping and stuff, you know, either of these setups would be good. Um, so when I originally went for the Star Adventure, I was torn between these two options. And um, I'd seen a couple of videos, one by Luca Medico, um, his astrophotographer channel is a great channel. Um, should check it out if you've not seen it. And also Suiv the Lazy Geek. And um, he has a great video on this mount, which is one of the mounts that he has. And also he goes through the process of how to set this up in equatorial mode. So this AZ GTI is traditionally in its traditional normal format. It just comes as what's called an alt azimuth mount, which means it's goes left, right, up and down. So it's not necessarily optimized for astrophotography. However, there's a nice easy hack for that, which is basically by adding a wedge, by updating the firmware in the mount itself, and if you need to, adding a counterweight bar. And basically then what you have is a little equatorial mount. Um, so yeah, I was torn between these two and I went with the Star Adventurer because I was thinking, you know, I don't need a computer at all to run this. I can just stick a DSLR on the end of it and I'll be good to go. Um, but the reality is, um, the reality is that <laughs> I've become way too lazy for that. And um, using it from my backyard um, and manually finding targets, I mean, it's okay, it's, it's okay, but it's, um, it's a bit of a drag, you know, you end up spending 30, 40, 50 minutes sort of just, you know, sometimes finding a really obscure target. Um, you know, it's not hooked up to the computer. My DSLR has not got a flip screen, so you're kind of trying to work out where you are from these exposures. Um, so immediately what I was finding is I wasn't keen to take it out. Um, now we've been in lockdown for a long time, so I've only been able to use this from my back garden. Um, and that wasn't the primary use of it. You know, mainly people want these things to be portable mounts that they can take, you know, <laughs> portably. So somewhere, something you can stuff in a backpack and take it to the to a beach or a camping trip or something like that. But I think for me, I wanted something as well that when I sort of started to look at the difference in price between these two, because this was like nearly 700 Australian dollars, this is only about 800 and something, and then another maybe 200 for the optional extras to convert this into an equatorial um, go-to mount. Um, when I considered the difference, you know, it was kind of a no-brainer for me and what I, what I like and what I needed in a mount that I was gonna use this a lot more. Um, I can hook a PC up to this, plug it into my computer, 
and it's basically functioning in the same way that my mount will, my normal go-to mount that I use, you know, on a weekly basis. So for me, it's kind of about value for money. It's like, what am I going to use? What are you going to use more? And I think that's one thing you have to think about with astrophotography. Um, it's all right to buy kit, um, but for me, it's all about how much are you going to use that kit? You know, it's one of the reasons that my mount outside, it stays on a trolley. So I can just push it to the middle of the lawn and um, it's got a box in the bottom with all my power ready to go and all the USB hub in there. And it means it doesn't take me very long to set up at all because I don't want barriers between me and feeling like I want to take some pictures of the night sky. So the less complicated for me, the better. So even though this, is, this seems like there's a lot going on here with wires, Essentially, I, this all gets plugged into my laptop and, um, you know, I do the basic polar alignment and I'm good to go. You know, I can use Nina or whatever astrophotography software and um, I'm off. I'm off and going and I'm taking pictures of the night sky. And, um, you know, that for me is the that for me is the at the core of it. You know, I have to be able to get the use out of something if I'm going to buy it. And I could, I could soon tell, you know, after only eight weeks, 10 weeks of having this, that I wasn't motivated to use it, to be honest. So um, whilst I think it's very good for some people, for me, it wasn't the right option. And so we've gone with the Skywatcher AZ GTI. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully I've got it right this time. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna start to look a bit silly. But um, so what I'm waiting for now is a clear night, a clear night of, um, clear, clear night of sky some nice stars and I will get this outside. I'll connect it up as I normally connect up my setup and um, just probably to the laptop to start with. I do have a um, secondhand mini PC that I have on order um, and I'm gonna set that up to it with Nina on it. I'm just gonna attach it somewhere below. That'll be fine for now. Um, and then I'm gonna have a night with this and just see how well the go-to works, see how well it's guiding you know, I know this is not like, I'm not expecting this to perform like a, you know, HEQ5 Pro mount, but, um, you know, I have got guiding and I'm only, you know, for the most part, I'm intending to use this mainly with my DSLR and lenses or shorter focal lengths, maybe like up to 200, you know, something like that millimeters. So I think this is going to be a great option as a portable rig. And I'm looking also forward to taking this down to, you know, beach, um, camping, possibly short hikes, but they'd have to be pretty short. Um, and I have been told as well by um, Sue of the Lazy Geek as well that if you have this in AZ um, alt azimuth mode, just with a tripod, you can still get reasonably long exposures of the night sky. So I might give that a go as well, see if we can get 30 to 60 seconds, you know, on a hiking trip and then, you know, get rid of a lot of the other stuff basically. But that's the plan. So we'll wait for a, a, um, a clear night now and I'll come back to you guys when we are testing it and we have got our first images coming in. So um, that's... Okay, so before I just finish off this first little bit of the video, I just want to say that I think on reflection for me, the difference is where you are in, in, um, in sort of your astrophotography journey. Because I think if I were just at the stage where I had a DSLR and I wanted to just get longer exposures, um, you know, maybe you want to start using um, your longer magnification lenses and, you know, you're starting to get those star trails and now you know you need a star tracker, then I think this could be good because all you really need to learn or understand is maybe just polar alignment and how to polar align your mount. Um, whereas conversely with this setup, this you're going to have to need to know quite a few more things so yes of course polar alignment for for any german equatorial mount like these but also you're going to need to know about things like astrophotography software so you know things like nina or apt or whatever particular software um, you're probably going to want to start to get into auto guiding um, as well and also probably going to need to know about things like plate solving as well um, so in terms of, you know, this setup, you, you're going to want to, this is most commonly going to be used with software. So your laptop or whatever sort of way you want to connect it, there's, there's various ways these days. But if you were to go simply from a DSLR to this, that is quite a learning curve. 
Um, but if you were going to go to a DSLR to this, it's not such a big learning curve because it's mainly just the polar alignment. So I think for me, that's why, for my circumstance, um, and I don't think it's the same for everybody, um, which is why I want to make a point about it. But I think that's why for me, this is not the right option because I already know how to operate this gear with my bigger mount. So it just makes sense to get a smaller, more portable version of what I already have. Um, and, and with all the conveniences that come with that. But if you're just starting off and you, you, know, you want to build up gradually and you want to kind of just get your head around and get something that's nice and portable and you're going to mount it and then you're going to point it to somewhere and now you're going to start taking your exposures, then this is a great option too. So I think for me, that's where, in my case, that's where the distinction comes from about which one of these to go to. And that's why for me, this is definitely the right the right choice so i hope that might help a bit if anybody is in that position and maybe trying to decide between these two of um of why i decided to go with this and, and not this one so we'll see what's right for you